This is Talking Work. I'm Deborah Ishihara. With all that's going on in the world in terms of rising energy and supply costs, we've been taking a look at a range of countries to find out which, if any, have state mechanisms to index link wages to inflation, and if so, whether that's a good strategy. Welcome to Talking Work, the employment law podcast by Use Laboris. In each episode, we invite a different guest to discuss what's happening in the world of work. If you're an HR professional of any kind, this podcast is for you. Today, I'm talking to Susanna Gavorgian, who's an economist and researcher for Use Laboris and a valued colleague of mine. She's been surveying our member firms on the issue of indexation, and I'm going to be asking her about her findings. Susanna, hello and welcome. Hi, Deborah. It's great to be here. Okay, now, as people can probably hear, we're both suffering from colds at the moment, so I'm hoping our voices will last to the end of this, but let's just see how we go. Yeah, same here. (laughs) (laughs) So, Susanna, we know that the global economy has been taking some big hits recently, but tell me, how has the economic downturn that we're experiencing now impacted the labour market? Tightened financial conditions and restrictive measures have triggered loss and damage in many markets and sectors, and the labour market is no exception. In 2020, global employment fell to 1.69 billion compared to 1.75 billion in 2019. However, by the end of 2021, the number of salaried workers recovered, almost reaching pre-pandemic levels. This followed the removal of pandemic-related restrictions by governments. But in 2022, the situation changed once again. Following war in Ukraine, uh, almost in all countries around the world recorded a rise in inflation, and this has had a significant effect on real wages. According to ILO estimates, global wage growth in real terms drops to minus 0.9%. And if China is excluded from the figures, as China normally has much higher than average wage growth, during the first half of 2022, global real wages dropped to minus 1.4%. So tell me more about how that situation is evolving now. Okay, Uh, in 2022, advanced economies registered their highest record inflation rate since 1982, 7.2%. And the inflation rate in emerging and developing markets reached 9.9%, the highest since 2000. Uh, However, according to IMF predictions, the global inflation rate will start to decrease gradually, reaching 3.3% in 2027. Okay. Now, as mentioned earlier, you've been doing a survey that looks specifically at wage indexation mechanisms. Tell me, first of all, just so we're all clear, what indexation is all about and what different types of it exist? Uh, Yeah, sure. Actually, one form of indexation is automatic wage indexation. With this method, there there is so-called pivot index. And if that index goes up by set margin, wages will be increased automatically. In some places, only the minimum wage will be increased in response to the index, not high salaries. Another nuance is where there is an index that people can refer to, but wages don't automatically increase. The index just forms part of collective bargaining discussions. The type of wage indexation used can also vary depending on the economy itself, on the sector uh, of company itself. And which countries did you find use mechanisms like these? Actually, I collected data from 27 countries and based what lawyers in our member firms told us, only two countries, Luxembourg and Belgium, had automatic wage indexation mechanism. Five out of 27 countries have a mechanism just for the minimum wage. In Canada, British Columbia only, and France, the inflation rate is considered only when setting the minimum wage in the private sector. There's some debate, though, isn't there, about these wage indexation methods. Some economists think they can lead to what they call a wage price spiral. Could you explain what a wage price spiral is, first of all? Okay, uh, yeah, in general terms, it means knowing inflation is growing, employees ask for higher wages. Businesses then increase salaries and end up passing the cost of those higher wages to customers. This creates a second round of rising prices, fueling inflation some more. In this way, the economy can enter a spiral of increasing prices and inflation. If you have automatic wage indexation, the risk is that this becomes an automatic chain of events. That sounds pretty dire. So what's the risk of that at the moment in your view? Uh, so far, so for, for some reason, historically, this course of events has actually happened very rarely. 
and when it has happened, it has only been short-lived. The risk is obviously high in countries with automatic price indexation for all wages, like Belgium and Luxembourg. If only the minimum wage is indexed, this is less of a problem, as minimum wages don't tend to have a big impact on wage growth. Wages are not catching up with inflation at the moment and productivity is increasing. So I would say the risk of a wage price spiral is relatively low and countries should be able to continue increasing wages in line with the growing cost of living crisis without fear of generating one. Very interesting stuff. And I'm glad you think we're going to be spared that fate for the moment, at least. Thank you so much in, for your insight, Susanna, on that. I really recommend you take a look at Susanna's report. It explains these economic concepts in a way that's very easy to follow. And there's a link to it in the note. We've also put our own contact details in the notes. And you're always welcome to contact me on anything to do with employment law. And I'll answer your query. Or if you need an expert in a particular country, say, I'll put you in touch with the right person. Do browse around our website a bit, by the way. There's lots of information there there on all sorts of employment related topics at usaboris.com. Thanks for listening and join us again. That's it for this episode of Talking Work, but we'll be back very soon with more insights from our guests from around the world. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. You can also visit usaboris.com to access all our content resources and tools.